These are my new favorite toys. Pom-poms. Who doesn't love pom-poms? They're so cute. I love these little things. They're amazing. I've got singles and doubles and all kinds of things. Today, I want to show you 10 different ways that you can play with pom-poms that are super fun and great for your child. Let's play. I'm Amy Baez, pediatric occupational therapist and founder of Play Bee, and I'm here with some playful solutions and powerful results. Today is a special video because I want to give a tribute to my mom. My mom is an amazing crocheter. She makes beautiful blankets and all types of things for people. And recently I had asked her if she could make me a hat for Christmas that included a pom-pom at the top, right? For my cute little Santa hat. And she did a great job. And in the process, she sent me a bag full of pom-poms. Right, like a bag full of these different kinds of pom-poms because she has all these different colors. And I thought like, what am I gonna do with all these pom-poms? Well, I realized I could do great things and have so much fun with my patients. So I'm gonna share with you now 10 ways that you can play with pom-poms. You don't have any, they're really not that hard to make. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to do that. But YouTube guys, hello, you're on YouTube. You can find so many ways to make them if you don't have a pom-pom maker. But let's talk about how you can use them once you've got them. Number one. So the number one thing I want to suggest is just practicing catching them. Why is this so important? Well, when you are teaching a child how to catch a ball, it can be really frustrating or take a long time because every time you toss the ball to them and they miss it, it rolls away. And so that becomes really problematic if they're rolling into different areas or it just takes a long time. It just really doesn't end up being that much fun. But if you practice catching with a pom-pom and they miss it, it doesn't roll away. It just falls down. So it's a lot easier for them to pick it up. Number two, tossing and throwing. Okay, so just like Catching is easier with the pom-pom. You can work on throwing these little pom-poms into baskets or at a target, and they are not going to roll away, right? But they also make it a lot of fun for children to throw at each other without hurting one another, or if you're practicing catching, it's not going to hurt them if they are, um, if it's coming at them. So tossing, practicing underhand toss and overhand toss or throwing it into a basket, anything that's revolving around those type of skills is going to be a lot easier and more fun using pom-poms. Number three, another thing I like to do is talk about matching right? So if you have two of each color, you could do a lot of matching type activities. So you might have a child sitting and they have to grab one from one side and one from the other side and they have to find the matching colors and put them together, things like that. So matching, creating more than one of the same color is another way that you can practice using the pom-poms and make things a little more fun. Number four, I love to use a scooter board when I'm playing with kids and using these pom-poms is a great way for them to work on moving around. So sometimes what I might do is scatter up the different pom-poms and I might say, oh, you need to pick up this color and, you know, go get the red one, go get the blue one, things like that. And they have to pick up the pom-poms and then transfer them over into another location or object or something like that. Number five, I like to call this little activity monkey feet. And what you're gonna do is place these on the floor and you're going to have children use their toes to pick up the different pom-poms. Why is this important? Well, there are children that have difficulty 
with using their toes. Now, hands are kind of like toes. Sometimes children that have a lot of low muscle tone or too much tone in their hands may also have that same situation going on in their feet. Well, and this is gonna help with things like jumping and walking stairs and things like that. So you can work on improving your monkey feet and this is going to help children improve their balance as well. Number six, another thing that you can do is making mini pom-poms, right? So you can make pom-poms quite easily using some common objects. You can use a fork to make mini pom-poms. You can use a piece of cardboard to make regular pom-poms. These are made out of yarn, so just using the yarn and twirling it around that fork uh, is an easy way to make your own without having to have a pom-pom maker. If you want a more detailed description, you can, like I said, um, research for other videos to do that, but making them is a great way to work on bilateral coordination and fine motor skills with children as well. Number seven. Another thing I like to do is called bear hunting. So basically you're going to be doing the bear walk. If you're not familiar with what bear walking is, be sure to check out that video. But bear walking is basically walking on your hands and using, uh, keeping your hips up in the air, but grabbing these uh, pom-poms while you're walking is still quite easy to do without it being too difficult if you're holding something like Lego or some other object. Because the pom-poms are very soft, it's easy to kind of walk with them in your hand and still keep walking and placing them into another container or, or something that's really fun for kids. Number eight. All right, another activity you can do is called the pom-pom shooter. You can use something like a cup or a toilet paper Holder, like the cardboard that's left over at the end and tie a or tape a cut balloon at the bottom of it and you can place the pom-pom inside and when you pull on it it's going to make the pom-pom shoot up in the air so that's super fun it's a great way for you to work with pom-poms and also a little craft activity as well number nine okay guys next one I call the hungry caterpillar so what you're going to do is you're going to use tongs in order to pick up those pom-poms and place them onto maybe some tape or some sort of design or maybe just in a straight line, but you're using tongs in order to place the pom-poms into some sort of row or a line to make it look like a long caterpillar. So I like to call that the hungry caterpillar. Number 10. All right, the last one I have for you is very simple. I just call this pom-pom pickup. And what it is, is really just picking up the objects at the end. It may not sound like a fun activity, but kids do like to um, pick up the pom-poms at the end, just kind of let them have their fun with them, let them throw them in the air, but then they have to collect them and pick them up at the end. And just a simple activity of holding a bag and putting pom-poms in the bag is a great skill for little children to work on, especially toddlers. So again, you're like stuffing as many as you can into that plastic bag or however you want to, to play with it. But picking up the pom-poms is just as much a valuable activity for children as playing with them. So there you have it guys, you have 10 pom-pom activities that you can do with children to make it super fun for them. There are so many other ideas that you could probably think of on your own. Just having a collection of them just brings a lot of joy and delight to children. Every single child I have introduced these to loves them. Okay, they love them. What they do love in particular is pulling at them and creating like these little, these little worms that come out. <laughs> so there's different ways that you can play with these pom-poms. And you know what? The thing is that if they get damaged or whatever, they'll just get another one. They are so inexpensive, so much fun, bring so much joy and delight. And create this magical play that you want to have. 
with your kid. So I advise you all to create a collection of these pom-poms. If you know a crocheter or someone like that who's crafty, ask them if they can make some for you. They'll probably make it a lot of fun for them as well because they're super cute and fun to do. Or again, you could make them yourself as an activity to do with your child or just do it for yourself for fun. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, like it, and also leave a comment. Until the next video, I hope you have a playful day. P-L-A-Y-A-P-Y, yay! Can you tell I used to be a cheerleader? I know.